several months I've been planning on doing a video on the Swarm Magnum disassembly and whatnot, and I've compiled a lot of footage and photos and everything, um, and it was just getting way too disorganized. I couldn't keep track of everything. I'm not good at this. I'm just doing it in my spare time. Um, so I decided to just show you what is going on and how this works. So essentially what the big problem is with the Swarm Magnum disassembly, I'm not even going to go over how to take the stock off or how to take the trigger out because if you're watching this video and you need to know, you already did all that. The trick is this pin right here. And this is a heartbreaker, this flat face. Um, so essentially that pin, as you probably know, sits right in there and it's basically the backstop or whatever, what, what basically what supports the piston. And it's under about two inches of preload. So there, and it's a big ass piston. So there's really a lot of stuff telling this pin not to move. Um, and essentially you need a dedicated spring compressor, whether you make one yourself um, with a C-clamp, or if you do what I did, because I wanted to test it out, get the Air Venturi spring compressor, which is good, but I think it needs more development. Um, I think there needs to be more clamping force. This needs to be more adjustable. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. So I've already taken the pin out, and here is, one second, Give me two seconds. Video just got interrupted because I got a phone call. Um, in the meantime, I took off the spring compressor and took out the guts because it was just going to be terrible and shaky the whole time. So if you don't want to make your own spring compressor because you know you'll do a shitty job, which is what I was thinking, um, get this. It's not perfect. You can damage your gun, as is evident from this rail, which I don't even use anymore, and I just use that specifically for um, clamping onto that. Um, and then that paired with, you'll have to fabricate up something. I used some copper pipe and end cap and super glued it to just a two inch piece of pipe that I basically just cut out, it's very crude, cut out a slot for the pin, and so you can see that you can basically look right through um, and have a nice little window to punch the pin out. Um, and that is basically the only complicated part to take your Gamo Swarm Magnum apart. And that also works for the Magnum and the Gen 2, unless they did something that they didn't tell me. Which, why would they tell me? Who knows? They're the same guns. Um, so the reason I did that was because I needed to do a, a main seal replacement. Um, you can get a replacement seal at um, Custom Air Seals Australia, so shipping's a bitch. Um, but they got a lot of cool stuff there, by the way. Um, not all of this is from Custom Air Seals, but all the colorful ones are, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, but so if you're taking apart your Swarm Magnum right now, and you are at this point where you're stuck on this pin and you've been tearing your rail apart, you've been hammering on it, you've maybe fucked up your receiver like I did, and now it needs to be repaired, you fucked up your pin, stop. Put an hour or two, this literally costs 50 cents to make, make one of those, um, and then, I know it's expensive, I think it's like $90 or something stupid like that, um, either get or make a spring compressor. Spend a couple days, wait a couple days, spend a couple bucks, um, save your gun. Leave your gun apart. You can't do this right now if you don't have the tools. I learned that the really, really hard way and I had to spend months fixing this gun. And I don't know if it'll ever be back to 100% because I was impatient and I didn't wait until I had the right tools. So moral of the story here is yeah, Gamo could have done a better job at allowing you to take this thing apart. Um, but also, get the right tools, have patience, because 
it's a 10 minute job with the right tools if you know what you're doing. Now we have the new piston, or er, new piston seal installed, and I did that in about five minutes. You can spend days and days and weeks and years and whatever prying and prying and pressing and squeezing and doing all this stupid stuff to get a new seal on here. You can also do that to get the old seal off. Um, by the way, yeah, this is pretty fucked up. Um, yeah, it's not good. Or you can just be smart and, again, same moral of the story as before with getting the piston itself out, get the right tools. This is a $10 heat gun. I actually got this for $8 at Harbor Freight. It's a warrior. It literally just plugs into any outlet and you have one and two power modes. When you're working with rubber, you want to use power mode one so you don't immediately melt the rubber. Don't do this with open flame. You'll melt the rubber. Um, so get it to where it's nice and warm um, and flexible. And then what you want to do is you want to specifically, this is the right size for this piston. You want to find an 11 30 seconds socket. And you want to just press it into the internal uh, race of the seal and just press it in with a with your vise or whatever if you don't have a vise what are you doing um and then you basically just line that socket up with the top of the piston take a bigger socket that basically fits like that and just fucking go bang 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 and the seal will pop right over off of your 11 30 second socket and just drop right down and you have a perfectly good piston seal. Although there's a little bit of... Um, hopefully that solves the loss of 10 foot-pounds of power that this gun is experiencing. Who knows? It's kind of terrifying. Um, but yeah, so that has been the two biggest problems you will have trying to completely rebuild a gamo. Um, and yeah, for putting the piston back in, it's the exact opposite. It's very straightforward once you know how to do it. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching.